If you've ever sat around for five, 10, 15 minutes, maybe even longer, waiting for your GPS unit to lock satellites, then you need to watch today's video because I'm gonna show you a new type of GPS receiver that is hands down better than anything that, well, I say we, I mean like small multi-rotor enthusiasts, hands down better than anything we have seen before. And I'm gonna show you just how much better it is. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Hey there folks, Joshua from the future here. Uh, just as I was about to publish this video, I became aware of a, let's call it a bug in Betaflight versions up to Betaflight version 441 that causes them to not set the parameters of M10 GPS correctly. I'm about to tell you how great these GPS units are and everything I'm gonna say is true, but if you buy one of these and it is not performing, well, frankly, if you buy one of these and you're using any version of Betaflight 441 or earlier, then you should always also watch the video that's linked in the video description or in the card at the end of the video telling you how to per correctly set the parameters. Otherwise, you may not be getting the most out of the GPS. On with the video. Before I start telling you why this GPS unit is so special, I'm gonna take this GPS unit out of the box. This is brand new, it's cold. I'm gonna plug it into this quadcopter and we're gonna see how long it takes for it to lock satellites and how many satellites it locks. And I'm gonna see if I can finish explaining to you why this is so much better before it locks all the satellites. Okay, I just plugged in that GPS receiver. Let's see how long it takes before we get some satellites. Um, so here's what makes these so special. These GPS units have a new chip on them uh, to receive and process the GPS signals. The previous chip that was on most of the GPS units that we were using was the M8 chip. This is the M10 chip. And what makes the M10 chip different is that it, it can listen simultaneously to four of the global GNSS, Global Navigation System Networks, at the same time. Okay, we got zero satellites up here. Keep your eye on that. It's, uh, this is the first time it's powered up, so it's gonna have to download the Almanac. It's gonna take longer, because this is a cold boot, but we're gonna see how long it takes, and I'm gonna keep explaining. So there are several global positioning networks. GPS, of course, is the one that people in America are most familiar with. Uh, there's Galileo, uh, made by the European Union. There's GLONASS, made by Russia. And there is Baidu, I think I'm probably saying it wrong, made by China. And the M8 chip could listen to three of those networks at the same time. And that's good because the more satellites a GPS system can potentially listen to and lock in on, the, the better its position data can be. The more satellites it has, the better its position data is, and the more networks it can listen to at a time, the more potential satellites there are overhead for it to lock in on. The difference is especially apparent when you're in areas with interference or when you're in like urban canyons where there's a limited view of the sky. If you're only listening to one network, then there's only so many satellites within that narrow view of the sky that you can see. But if you're listening to three networks at a time, then there's more satellites. And if you're listening to four networks at a time, then there's even more satellites. The gist of it is that these GPS receivers should get lock faster and lock far more satellites than the previous ones that we have seen before. Um, is there something else different and better about them other than the fact that they can lock four networks? Maybe, probably, I don't know. All I know is how they perform. Uh, oh, we just got four satellites. How long has it been? I don't know. I'm not paying attention to the clock, but four satellites is hardly enough to actually get in the air. Uh, so I'm gonna hurry though, because it's gonna start locking more and tell you about these specific GPS units. These are from Flywoo. Uh, and and fly, th that's the ones I've been testing because Flywoo sent them to me. Um, but the M10 chip, it's out there. Everybody's using it now. And what I want you to know is, oh, there we go. We got five satellites. We're not gonna stop with five satellites though. Uh-oh, crap. I have to arm because my, my ESC has started beeping. I have to arm my motors real quick because I don't want to power cycle my quad. Hold on, let's see if we can do this safely. Oh, how about if we put it in turtle mode? Oh, that wasn't turtle mode. Okay, well, we're fine. <laughs> okay, that was exciting. Uh, put this fan back on my air unit. Just like 
all of the GPS units you bought before, no matter who you bought them from, they all had the same M8 chip inside them. Uh, lots of manufacturers are making GPS units with this M10 chip in them. Oh, we're up to seven, eight satellites, it's climbing. Seven or eight satellites is pretty much the max I'm used to seeing on any small, like five inch or smaller beta flight, INAV, whatever. That's like the most I ever see, but it's gonna keep climbing. Nine satellites, I better hurry. Flywoo has several of these available. There's the Nano, which is like freaking tiny. There's the Mini, which is about the same size as like the BN880 that you're used to seeing. And then there is the Pro. And the difference, the Pro has a much larger antenna and it has a built-in compass. So if you're looking for something to do true navigation, this is the one you're gonna get. The smaller ones don't have a compass and uh, they, uh, but they do have uh, storage. You can see that even the very, very tiny one, I don't know if you can see, there's a little battery there. Um, so if you wanna hook them up to U Center and reprogram them, they can all do that, even the very smallest one. And the interesting thing is that the price of these guys is not that much more than the cheap, like, M8 chipset ones that you used to see. So if you have GPS on any of your quadcopters or aircraft air, or wings, it is 1000% worth spending another 15 or 20 bucks to swap that M8 receiver out for an M10 receiver, unless you're just perfectly happy with the performance and you get all the satellites that you ever could want. And if you're starting from scratch, don't even look at an M8 receiver, just get the M10. They're so much better especially on these little quadcopters where there's so much electrical interference and the performance is usually quite poor. Okay, I'm not gonna keep babbling while I wait for the rest of the GPS satellites to come in. I'm gonna fast forward this and I'll tell you how long it took. We're up to nine satellites. I suspect what that means is that we've like downloaded the Almanac from some networks, but maybe not others. And, uh, but I've seen, I've seen up to 18 or 19 satellites while in flight. So I'm gonna let this go and we'll see how long it takes and how good it gets. 10, 11, altitude 300 meters, that clearly isn't right. <laughs> 11, 12, 13. I'm gonna move the goggles a little further away to see if that improves things. Maybe we're getting a little interference from them. 15, oh, it's going up. 16, oh, 16. We're gonna get 17. Well, it looks like we've settled in around 16 satellites. Like I said earlier, the most I've seen in flight is 19, and the chipset is theoretically capable of locking as many as 30 under ideal conditions. The bottom line is that these M10 chipsets, whether you buy the Flywoo Goku ones that I'm showing you in this video, or an M10 receiver from any other vendor, they seem to perform way better than the older M8 chipsets, and that's what you should buy. If you wanna pick up the Goku ones, I've got links down in the video description. Thank you to Flywoo for sending me these to test. If you are gonna use uh, GPS Rescue with Betaflight, you're gonna to wanna to test it before you rely on it. And the problem is that when, when you activate GPS rescue in Betaflight, if things aren't exactly how Betaflight wants it to be, your quadcopter will just fall out of the air. And then you'll have the long walk of shame, hopefully to retrieve it instead of losing it forever. I've got a technique for testing Betaflight GPS rescue that protects you from crashing if GPS rescue doesn't go right. I'm gonna put a card on screen where you can check out that video as well as a link down in the video description if for some reason you can't see the card. See you there.